This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Concerning the firstborn. And they knew for certain that he was God's special child. Unlike any other person who had ever walked the face of this earth, they were privileged to watch him grow and to help him grow in his own understanding of who he was and what he was to accomplish on this earth. Other early witnesses were the shepherds on the night of our, Lord, our Lord's birth. They were ordinary folk going about their routine work. When God's messengers came to them in that place of employment out there in the fields and told them the marvelous wonders of that night. Note that God didn't send his angels to the king or to the religious leaders, but the common folk, the working folk, like you and I. And the Bible tells us that when, when they had seen Christ's child, they went away singing and praising God. Then they were Philip and Nathaniel. You know, Nathaniel was disillusioned with the church of this day. He had grown sour on his religion. He was embittered and burned out. But then along came Philip. He was a young and energetic and probably optimistic for Nathaniel. After all, Nathaniel thought to put him in his place. After all, what did this young man know? You know, he was still wet behind the ears. He would show this young pup that the people never really changed. And that the church, as he knew it, was going downhill fast. Philip said to him, I have found the one of whom Moses and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathanael was quick to puncture his balloon. Rubbish, he said. Rubbish. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip had used the scriptural approach on him, and he wasn't getting Anywhere. Hmm. He had made reference to Moses and the prophets. And that's all right. If you can get by with it, and if it works. But the danger of using such an approach is that the judgment of the Bible points both ways. We can't pretend to be the embodiment of Scripture. Not a one of us has ever been successful at keeping the Ten Commandments. Nathaniel probably resented this young man's hurling Scripture quotations at him, but Philip was alert enough to know what was going on. So he backed up, and he came at him from another angle. He appealed to the desire of a personal experience. He said, 
Well, Nathaniel, you'll just have to come and see this man for yourself. Just come with me and take a look at Jesus. And you'll see a God who is on your side. A God who is in the business of forgiving and making you a whole person. And when Nathaniel responded positively to Philip's invitation, he experienced Christ for himself. The Samaritan woman at the well related her conversation with Jesus to the people of her village. She called him a prophet, not a fortune teller, but a fourth teller, one who proclaims the word of God. She said, in effect, come, come and see a man who helped me to understand myself and see myself in a new light. Then there was the demon-possessed man on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, the one we just read about. Jesus and the disciples had just landed that boat at the shore after enduring a storm at sea. And here came this naked, screaming, raving, bleeding, bruised, and scarred, wild-eyed possessed man running down the hill towards him. Sometimes he would run into town like that and terrorize the citizens. They didn't have mental institutions back then. So they arrested him and they chained him. But he was able to break his chains with the tremendous strength that he had. <clears throat> then they chased him out of town when he broke loose. He went to live among the dead in one of the caves near the town cemetery. And I am sure that those villagers could hear those screams of that tortured soul coming from that cemetery at night. It must have been enough to chill your blood, you know, raise the hair on the back of your neck. And when the disciples saw this raving lunatic running towards them, they did exactly what you and I would do. They gave him immediate access to the Master. Yeah. And more than likely, they wanted to get back into the boat and head for safer shores. But they probably hurled behind Jesus and huddled and got down beside him. And the Lord said to him, Ah, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Oh Lord, the man responded, that's just it. I don't know who I am. I'm lost and I'm confused. My name is Legion. For there are many selves inside me. I present one self to my boss at work. And another to the guys at lunch break. I show my wife one side and the children another. And when I go to church, I present an entirely different picture. But the fact of the matter is that when I look at myself in the mirror, I don't know who I really am. I am unable to identify the real me. And at one point in that conversation, this man who had come running to Jesus for help even shouted, Jesus, Jesus, have you come to torment me, to me too, like everyone else? But out our Lord came to 
heal and deliver. Not to judge and punish. And Christ caused this man's illness to enter into the herd of pigs. Immediately they rushed into the sea and were drowned. Then he could say to the man, See, there are your sins and infirmities at the bottom of the sea. They can't bother you any longer. And the man was soon found clothed in his right mind. But when the people of the village heard about it, they said, Jesus, get out of town. We'd rather have the pigs than you. And Jesus never says where he was not wanted. And so he left. But before he left, he told the man to go home and witness. Home is the highest place in the whole world to witness. But not only did the man witness at home, he went to ten other towns as well. He had quite a dramatic conversation story to tell, and he became an effective evangelist. And then there was the woman who, because of her disease, had been a social outcast. She had consulted with all the best doctors about her physical disorder, but without success. She had spent 12 years talking about how sorry the church was and where it had failed her. She talked about the poor choir, the inept Sunday school teachers, the incompetent preacher, the bad program, the inadequate leadership and the fact that the church was filled with hypocrites. Nothing, but nothing pleased her or satisfied her until Jesus came along. It had a good word about a good God and good life that could be hers. Not only does our Lord tell it like it is, he tells it like it can be. We need to face our problems in the church. But we will never, never get new members by going around and telling everyone how bad it is. It would be far better for us to talk about what the church can become in Christ and invite others to come and discover with us the difference Christ can make. Everything and everyone had failed this one woman until Jesus gave her the courage to reach out to God simply by touching the hem of his gun. And she was healed instantly. Isn't that a wonderful? Isn't that great? Just think about the power that radiates from Jesus to hold people up to the light of Christ is to witness a miracle already taking place. What a grand privilege it is to introduce others to Jesus Christ. And the miracle of sharing my faith in Christ is whenever I give him to others. Jesus becomes more of a living reality to me. There are many other accounts in the New Testament concerning how people encountered Christ at that point in their lives where they needed him the most. 
through a use of the imagination to introduce you to a few of those witnesses. You may read about them in the Bible, but most important of all, you can become a witness. Whenever you reach out to Christ at the point of your need, and he takes you by the hand and enables you to stand up to life, then you too will be able to witness to others. I have seen the Lord.